Hi friends, I'm Katie Brinkley and you're listening to Rocky Mountain Marketing. With nearly two decades helping business owners, consultants, and coaches with their digital marketing, I know that social media can be an incredible tool to grow your business when you know how to do it the right way. And that's what we're going to do today. I teach you how to navigate the world of entrepreneurship and digital marketing, and hopefully you'll grow your business with a few great tips you wouldn't have known otherwise, and maybe even discover a great local business you love. Let's dive into today's episode. Welcome back to this week's episode of Rocky Mountain Marketing. Today, we're going to talk about what came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, but we're going to actually make it in relations to business here. So we're going to talk about what should come first, branding or marketing? How are they different? How are they the same? Which one should come first? So I called in two of my very good friends. They are the founders of a company called Brand Face. So I'm sitting down today with Tanya Eberhart and Michael Carr. You, if you came to Social Profit Lab earlier in 2023, you probably checked out their amazing session, which was all about branding, how to charge what you're seeing and change. Yeah, charge what you're seeing, change, change what, change how you're seeing, charge what you're worth. Man, I'm going to mess that up till the day I die, I guess. But Tanya and Michael are international best selling authors. They're the hosts of the Be Bold branding podcast, partners in Brand Face, which is the most comprehensive personal brand building system around the entire globe. They've helped and inspired thousands of coaches, creators, and experts define and develop and display a profitable personal brand so they can change how they're seen and charge how, what they're worth. And their ma- mantra is people don't do business with a logo. That is something I feel like I've been preaching for a while here. So Tanya and Michael, thank you so much for joining me on Rocky Mountain Marketing today. Oh, thank you, Katie. It's a pleasure to be with you again. Always, always. Thank you for having us. And, you know, your session was so good at Social Profit Lab. Uh, it, it was, you know, your your mantra, you know, of, of, of char- change how you're seen, charge what you're worth. And I think that's one of the biggest problems that so many of us run into is, one, that self-confidence, but uh, of how we're seen and how can we actually charge w- what we feel we should be, what we should be charging. And a lot of it comes with how you step into your business. And it's one thing that I've been saying for a while is people don't want to do business with the logo and everything changed for my business. When I changed my Instagram logo or Instagram avatar from my my logo, which I really like, I paid a lot of money for, but I changed it from that to my face and everything changed. And it's the title, the name of your company is so perfect, Brand Face because you do need to be the face of your brand these, these days. That's so true. That's so true. And I am so excited to have this chicken and egg conversation today. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of our favorites. <laughs> well, because I think that so many people, and I mean, I work in marketing, but so many people really don't know which one they should focus on first. We think, oh, we need to have a, this website. We need to have our, uh, you know, social media done. We have to have our brand colors and our logos done and, uh, which fonts we want to use. But is that the most important thing or should we just get out there and try to start selling? So let's have that conversation today because you two are my top experts in this field. Let's talk about branding and marketing. What do you guys think? What comes first? The branding? Or the marketing. Okay, that's super easy for for us. <laughs> I'm going to jump in and take this one first because I'm very passionate about it. So I, I I encourage people to ask themselves this question: When you go straight for the marketing first, what are you going to market? Who are you trying to reach with that marketing? What are you going to put in that marketing? How are you going to share and express how you're different from everybody else and what qualifies you to help that person? Because all of those things are your brand. So if you go for the marketing first, all you're left with is this is what I do, right? This is I'm a real estate agent. I'm a life coach. I'm a financial advisor, right? Those are, there's millions of those, millions. Mm -hmm. And so what makes you different in that 
indicates exactly who you're going to serve. And so all of those questions that you ask yourself, those have to be answered first before your marketing becomes profitable at all. So if you, the, the real question is if you want to make money, from your brand, you do the brand first. If you want your marketing to be profitable, you dial in the brand first. Mm -hmm. And if I can add on to that, uh, Katie, I, I'm a living proof of this uh, test subject <laughs> because I had been an entrepreneur for 20 years before I met Tanya and had been in the auction business and the real estate business and on a national level too, and had been a senior vice president of the second largest real estate auction company in the world. I was licensed in 30 something states, uh, especially during the debacle, you know, the mortgage debacle of eight, nine and 10 and 11 and 12 and a little bit of 13, some 14. But they, <laughs> I, when I came back um, to my hometown, north of Atlanta, I opened up a real estate brokerage. And I thought at the time that I was just going to kill, kill it with this really script logo, this really awesome some MC that I'm still in love with, but she took away as soon as I hired her. And, um, and she taught me, uh, you know, when she called me and we started working together, she had a full turnkey operation where she helped people. And I thought back then, especially that this was 2013, the end of 2013, I needed marketing. I need marketing. I need me a marketing person that knows what they're doing. And Tanya called me and she, she, she really sold me marketing because she knows it so very well. Uh, but then she gave me branding because at the time it oh. was just wasn't there yet. Like the, the the terminology was wasn't really there. She had written a book. I didn't even know that she had written the book. She was taking me through the same principles that we take every one of our clients through, no matter what type of business they're in. And it was transformative for me. I was already a successful entrepreneur. I became a wealthy successful entrepreneur after I changed my thought process from marketing to branding first. Well, Get I that. love your story, Michael, because so many of us do the same thing. You know, we, we have that, okay, well, I need to be doing this. I need some more marketing. I need some more sales, you know? Sure. And Tanya, tell us a little bit, you know, Michael gave a brief introduction to, to you, but tell us a little bit how you got started with Brandface and, what led you to become so focused on branding from, as opposed to marketing? Because, I mean, th th really, these two services go hand in hand. They do. But if you, if you want to have a successful marketing, you need to have a strong branding strategy. So tell us just a little bit about your history here. Yes. Okay. It's a natural evolution to where I am today. Very natural. And it started out in a very glamorous place. I was selling <laughs> vacuum cleaners door to door to pay my way through college. <laughs> and uh, I did that for three years and it actually paid my college tuition. So um, one day I sold a vacuum cleaner to a radio station engineer and he said, look, there's a job position available at my radio station. Why don't you come and apply? And I thought, well, that sounds sort of interesting. So 18 years later, I was still in the media world. Well, there are a couple of things that happened. When I started in in the vacuum cleaner sales world, I um, realized very quickly that I was getting door slammed in my face like almost everybody else. And I realized I'm going to have to come up with some sort of story and I'm going to have to present myself a little bit differently. When I learned how to navigate that, the doors just flew open. And I thought, this is very interesting. Well, then I migrated to the radio world and the doors that were slammed in my face there were slammed harder and there were many more zeros behind those doors. And I thought, okay, this is not ever going to work. I will you know, that I won't stand for this. I've got to figure this out. So I knew that I was dealing with these people who were spending tens, even into the hundreds of thousands of dollars a month on marketing. And if I wanted to be taken very seriously, I had to change the way I was seen. I had to change the way I presented myself. And so once I, once again, I kind of reinvented, right? And because I wanted them to see me as very serious, not somebody who just had tickets to the game and a free lunch. So mm -hmm. I reinvented myself approach those doors in a very different way. And again, it worked like crazy. And 
I thought at that moment, oh my gosh, if this can work for me, it can work for my clients. And so I started bringing them into the radio studio one by one, teaching them how to tell their story, how to craft that message, how to put together the strategy. And years later, as I was going through different, you know, media outlets, that was really my thing. You know, that was, I was helping people develop that story and that personal brand. And they became like rock stars in their local communities. So I knew I was on to something. And then in 2012 or so, I uh, I had been running an agency for a little while. It was an integrated marketing agency. We did a little bit of everything because that was during the mortgage debacle as well. And I think a lot of people did a little bit of everything just to make money come through the doors. And one day I'm sitting there and things were, the market was improving, economy was improving. And I thought, okay, well, everybody who walks through that door, I can pretty much do business with. And I thought, oh God, everybody who walks through that door, I can do business with. This means I'm no longer special. I don't specialize in anything. Oh no. So that's when Brandface came to my mind. And when I thought I'm going to write this book and then very quickly in writing the book, the book I knew could become an incredible business because it was the the principles of personal branding and they would apply to any industry. And that's kind of the same time that I met Michael and how I got right here. I love that that story, Tanya, because it it is an evolution. Well, and you know, you and I both come from radio. So I love that right. we have that history together. But you know, with what you did, it was an evolution of what you saw that was missing in the marketplace and even something that you had been missing with your own business. You, I could help anybody. Well, wait a second. Now there's Ooh. nothing unique about me. And when you, when there's nothing unique about you, that's when you have to take that step back and be like, well, what are my core values? What is it that I can provide that nobody else can? And that's where branding comes into play. So talk to us a little bit about how you helped Michael establish what his branding was that helped him take his marketing to the next step. Okay, so the very first thing I did was I was I was going through our Scrapped regular everything that came before. <laughs> That's true. Well, he's still mad about his logo, by the way. He had this, and it was awesome. It had this nice, beautiful scripty M and C for for his initials. But when you're driving 65 miles an hour past a, a real estate sign, you don't even know what that says, right? So we started there. <laughs> But in the discovery process, I'm looking for that point of differentiation, right? And I realized, okay, you're a really super successful auctioneer with a national footprint. Like this is what, this was your craft since he knew he wanted to be an auctioneer since the time he was seven years old. So I learned about that story. And then he said, well, I've sold more, you know, I've been involved in more real estate transactions than pretty much anybody, period. And I'm like, what? Can you repeat that for a minute? What are you talking about? And at the time we calculated, going back through all the numbers and calculated everything that he had been involved at the time in, I believe it was 65, 58, 58 when we first started working together, 58,000 real estate transactions. And I thought that's incredible, right? That's incredible. So immediately um, I gave him the brand identifier, America's top selling real estate auctioneer. Instantly that, that gave him credibility, right? And then underneath that, it was the confidence of over at the time 58,000 transactions, right? So what mm-hmm. that means is people knew that he was America's top selling. So that automatically put him on another plane, another level on a national level. So imagine what that looks like in your hometown where you're trying to build a small boutique brokerage. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's like, okay, 58,000 transactions. Who in the world has even seen anything like that around here? Yeah. And what's important to note about that, that Michael says is it's not the number that that was impressive to people. It was on the surface, it was the number. It's what that number translated into. And that was experience. If he's seen 58,000 of these, imagine how many he's seen go wrong and had to fix and knows how to fix them and knows how to cut them off at the pass. And so as a result, all the people that came underneath him would inherit a lot of that knowledge that he had gained over all those years of experience. So that was the very first thing we did. 
did. And it wasn't too long after that, that people were recognizing him everywhere around here because we plugged that into his marketing. He does radio marketing to this day. There are probably six or seven billboards up and down the I-85 corridor for Michael uh, and, and his agents now. And so people begin to, to recognize him on a wider scale. And that's really how it all started. And I'll, you can tune in there if you yeah. want. I might have taken, you know, yeah. stolen his thunder there, but. Well, no, 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 not at all. I, I think that, that what really, uh, two, the two things that I was super impressed with her about. The first one was she took time with me. So like when she first called me, she called me first. And, and when she first called me, she said, I don't know if I'm supposed to call you or you're supposed to call me. And I'm like, whatever. I, I was mean. Like I was really mean too. I told her, I said, listen, I've, I've had four others just like you and I don't need another one. And he did um, do that. <laughs> and then, then I realized, and Katie, I'm gonna put this on recording for you. I realized how wrong that was. That, that nobody else had ever, ever done what she had done. And what, and so what she was the first one that came in and said, "Okay, I need to know who you are, what you are, what you yeah. stand for. How did you get here? And then how is it going to make your clients' lives better?" And she taught me, number one, I needed to be the face of my business because I'm in a small town building a, a boutique brokerage. I never wanted a huge firm. I just wanted a boutique brokerage. And she said, these people here need to recognize you and then they need to recognize your story. And by digging into that, she pulled the elements of my life experience out and was able, but she could do it better than anybody. Um, I'm biased when it comes to that, but it's true. And she showed my clients why all of that mattered to them. Cause nobody mm -hmm. cares that I had sold 58,000 houses. Um, they care about theirs. So they yeah. care about the 58,001 and the 58,002, right? They only care about theirs, and I don't blame them for that. She was able to show that it, it was experience level, and then you need to know who this guy is. You know, he, he loves investing in real estate. He's studied real estate. He's worked on his billionaires uh, that have dealt with real estate. He can build. He can uh, – re, he's rehabbed 800 houses. Like, how does all of that – help you is what she was really good at doing. And I think that's what a brand has to do, uh, especially it, in the age we live in now. Exactly. We, we didn't have that much internet back then. We did, but what, nobody was utilizing it like they do now. Like now you get, if y'all don't mind me going off on a tangent for a second, now you get on to presentations with multiple people on there and you get on you get on summits and things like that right and you're asked to speak and that's wonderful because you're going to get this opportunity to share people we do personal branding but then that like people that do email marketing will answer personal branding questions and that's not relating to our audience that you need email marketing and then first you need a brand. You, does that make sense? And mm -hmm. so everybody in this age of information can find everything that they want. And then it becomes just so confusing. Like we're just like, and it happens to us too, because we have a lot of collaborations. We work with a lot of people. And I feel like everybody in your audience um, suffers as we do from opportunity. I believe that we all have this massive, massive opportunity. But if we look at it like I'm going to fish this entire ocean, we're never going to catch anything. We have oh, to bring that. it into focus. And your brand does that. It says, I know I don't work with, the, with you or your type of need right now. My friend Katie does or my friend yeah, Chris does or my friend, you know, these other friends. I can help you with your problem. This is what I do. And mm -hmm. also, this is what you need. You know what I mean? And when we focus that in, because that's what she did for me. She just brought the focus in. And then she taught my clients to look back at that focus. And it's, it, that was the magic sauce. And I love, too, that you you started with what is it that makes you different? I, I, that's one of the things that I think so many people are even missing with their social media. I, on your Instagram, you have to quickly say, what it is that you do, uh, who you work with, why you, and then w what else, wh what do you want them to do next? You have to get all that out in 150 characters, and it's it hard. But what you did, Tanya, is, with helping Michael step into his brand message, 
you set established him as the authority you for how many ho- houses that he's uh done 53 how long he's been in the industry how he's you know all of that is wrapped into one statement so for me you know it's 19 years helping entrepreneurs make money on social media so my my differentiator I've been doing this a long time probably more than I would like really like to admit <laughs> uh, but but I mean like and who do I help I help entrepreneurs and and what do I do I do social media so when you have that that statement of this is how why you should trust me that will help you differentiate yourself from the competition and help you get charged what you are worth yeah. and I think that so many of us that's probably why we're not making the money that we feel that we should be making. We're, we haven't established our authority. Agreed. Yeah. Like if I could give a, a little uh, allegory to that, um, just this morning I met with a banker and uh, in my real estate office, he was a commercial banker and he had stopped and dropped off some paperwork, uh, just introducing himself with his brand and everything. Now he didn't have a personal brand. I'm going to, that's the next conversation we'll have with him, but he did have a brand and he, and he, you know, had some information about himself and information about his bank. But when he came and met me face to face today and he shook his hand and introduced himself again, he says, um, I, I hope you'll give me a little time to, to let, to, so I can tell you how I'm different. Like it was right off, right off the bat. He just said, I want to, I want to share with you how I'm different. So he's already got my attention. Number one, because you just, I deal with a lot of bankers and they, and nobody does that. And so automatically I'm like, well, maybe this guy speaks the language. Right. And, and sure enough, I think we're going to end up doing a deal together. And that's, that was really good. But to your point, that's what all of us, that's what she taught me. And that's how we all need to approach this. Let me tell you how Katie's different in uh, helping entrepreneurs with their social media make money. And that's and that's where the driving force is for all of us. Tanya, do you, it looks like you're about to jump in there. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, he's, you know, Michael, Michael's right. It is going back. I, I like to take it back just for one moment to the brand before the marketing aspect of it, because you know, that is such a critical part of things. And as, as Michael says, you know, you, uh, you can't calculate the cost of confusion, right? So when you market mm-hmm. and you're not differentiating yourself, that can create a lot of confusion because, you know, how many personal branding people are out there? How many social media person are out, p- people are out yeah, there? Yeah. You have to differentiate yourself. Otherwise, you're just lost in what we call the sea of sameness. And, and that becomes a huge, huge problem. And, I saw it back in 1988 when I first entered the media world. What I saw was people were wasting so much money on their marketing. It was unbelievable the amount of money that was wasted. And I'm talking about like Super Bowl commercials on a local level. People would spend yeah. a lot of money on those things and have zero um, message, have zero mm-hmm. memorable message no point of differentiation. It's just like we That's sell cars. Happening. We sell cars, right? Yeah. The, the last thing you want to have is a, a someone say, oh, you know that one company? I can't think of right. who they are. Yeah. They do They've the, got this cool commercial that, where somebody does a backflip and lands on a dog or yeah. whatever, you know? I mean, it's like, oh, it's so funny. No, but, but I mean, nobody knows what that is. It, it, Exactly. And, and with, even with you, you, Tanya, I feel like every time I see you, you're wearing orange. You know, it, it, you, you have the gold microphones. I mean, everything that you have is on brand. And, uh, you know, even I got into to the office today. And if, if you, for those that are watching on YouTube, I'm wearing a green sweater and a red shirt. And this is not on, I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot that I had a podcast <laughs> interview today. I'm not wearing anything on, I was like, gosh, this is going to look so weird when I go back to watch. I was like, why was I wearing that? Because I forget, like anytime I'm going to go on, on camera, I try to always stay in that like pinkish color. I have something with a microphone or a mountain on, I guess I still have my mountain necklace, but I mean, I try to always stay on brand so that it is recognizable because in, in a three second world, we only have three minutes to capture attention. And True. that's where your branding is so important. Yeah. And those are mm-hmm. elements, too, not to cut you off, but those are mm-hmm. elements that are so important. My my dad was in the car business, and, he, of course, we had to work for free, you know, slave labor and stuff. And, they, and so, <laughs> like, we would clean up the cars when we were young, and he'd, he'd yell at us about cleaning the door jams. And I'm like, why do we got to clean the door jams? He's like, people don't realize that they notice that. 
And and he's he was right because like your mountain necklace and like being like noticing she's in orange most of the time you usually have some kind of blue or black on. They we uh, we we mm-hmm. stick to those things because it registers to people even though they don't really recognize that until you send them something and they're like, why is this familiar to me? And yeah, that's true. Yeah. But I do want to say something about that. Because this is where there's a lot more confusion when it comes to to branding. A brand is really an entire ecosystem. Like when we do personal branding, we look at 77 different criteria. Color, a logo, those are only two small elements of a brand. Now, when people are skimming Instagram or Facebook or anything like that, and they see that pop of orange or they see, you know, a certain brand color, that might cause their visual, you know, mind to like, oh, that's interesting. Stop. Right. And then over time, they'll recognize, recognize, hey, that's brand face. That's brand face. Right. So there is that Mm -hmm. what I call that initial attention getting the window to the soul of the brand that just that instant stop capture your attention for just a moment. But it means absolutely nothing if it doesn't have the foundation underneath it. Anybody can produce a cool, slick logo, have consistent brand colors, and even have an amazing yeah. photo. A photo logo and a tagline, as we say, that does not constitute a brand. It has to be deeper than that. And that's really when you know it works. Because think about it. If all I've got is a logo, co- photo, and a tagline, people may know what I do. It may even be a little bit clever. But if I don't have all the foundation with it, I definitely won't have all the content. I won't have all the connections. I won't have all the things that I need to make that brand flourish and come to to life from the ground up. And that's when you that's when it becomes more of a shallow hell kind of a brand, right? <laughs> you just on the surface it's cool, right? <laughs> or not. <laughs> that brings up a great point. When you want to have a successful brand, what are some of the key elements you need to have in place to make sure that you're not just a logo and, you know, some pretty some pretty colors. What is it, what are the signs of a successful brand element to you? Okay, I'll, I'll throw out I'll throw out several of them right now, but I'm going to start with the questions. Five critical questions that every great brand must answer. And these are questions you spend time on. You just don't sit down and in an hour have all the answers to everything, right? It's exactly who do you serve? You know, we don't just serve people or business owners, right? We specifically work with coaches, creators, and experts who want to build a profitable personal brand and have multiple projects and things going on at one time. And they're not really sure how to rein all those in into one profitable brand. They're all over the place. They feel all over the place now. So, so exactly who do you serve is the first one. Exactly how do you serve them? It, you know, what ways are different than other people? Because other people are trying to serve them as well. What qualifies you to serve them? How does it make their life better? And what makes you different from everyone else who's also trying to serve that same person? You've got to start with answering those with great thoroughness. And when you do that, only then can you move forward to building a really concrete, powerful, consistent brand. Because most of the time when people say, oh, it's time to rebrand or I'm going to build my personal brand now, um, the first thing they do is like, I need a logo. I need some photos done. And that's all they think about at that point, logo and photos. And that's great. Those are two important parts of a brand. But how do you know what kind of logo you need? What does it need to look like? Mm-hmm. Like, and, and then most especially, what do my photos need to look like? What do I need to wear? How do I need to pose? Do I have, do I need any props? Do I need it to be any special location? Anything like that? How do I present myself in a way that's going to attract exactly who I'm trying to attract, which takes you back to the the first thing of the five questions, exactly who are you serving? Because you need to know who it is you're trying to attract so you know what will attract them. So it's that vicious cycle of of that. And if you get one of those things wrong, there can be a major disconnect. Yeah. So that's just starting. 
<laughs> like, process, right? For my firm, we still do that. It's t- 10 years we've been doing that. Uh, you know, uh, come August, we'll work on our 11th year. We still do that. We do not have a marketing conversation at all in my firm that we don't answer those five questions with whatever platform we're going to use, Google or uh, Facebook strategies or uh, any other social media, LinkedIn strategies that we use. We're still asking ourselves those same questions um, because we got to know who we're talking to so we can say the right things. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I know that you guys have a mastermind that you do quarterly, right? Uh, for, for different people that are looking to embrace the branding side of their business. Can you talk to us just a little bit about that? Sure, sure. This is a very like intimate setting working directly with me and Michael and our expert team of personal branding folks. And we actually take these clients in this mastermind setting through every single step of building a brand from the ground up. And what's really cool about that, and I got to be honest with you, I do, I, we weren't sure um, in the very beginning, could we do this in a mastermind setting? Because this is personal branding and people want that personal attention, right? They get every bit of that personal attention. But another thing they get that even we didn't realize the power of until we did it was the the feedback from their peers, the inspiration mm-hmm. from their peers and having people in there with them, holding their hand and making sure that every part of their brand is built very authentically because they're doing that for each other. And it's really a very cool community aspect to it all. And so that's what we do. It usually lasts about 12 weeks and we do at least three a year. Um, don't know if we'll go quarterly just yet or not, but we do at <laughs> least three a year. Uh, our next one's starting on March 1st of 2023. And, uh, and we, we just love the process, Katie. Absolutely love it. And there's a maximum of 10 people in that program. It, it, there is something to be said about being in a mastermind and the connections that can happen in there and the relationships and having that accountability for really t- taking your business to the next step. Because I, I'll be honest, there's been plenty of times where I've been wanting to, to do something and it's like, oh, well, I'll just do it tomorrow. <laughs> I'll just go ahead and do it tomorrow. But when you have that group in there that are like, but did you do it tomorrow? <laughs> like, did you do it yet? Right. Um, you you take tomorrow. yourself to a whole new accountability. When's, when is the next one? The next one starts yeah, soon, start right? May the 1st. And, uh, and awesome. we're taking applications for it now. Um, so, and if you want more info on that, and you can go to brandfacemastermind.com and that'll kind of give you a lot more information about it. Awesome. Yeah. Go to brandfacemastermind.com. We'll include a link here in the show notes. Uh, connect with Tanya and Michael because they are a wealth of knowledge. You guys also have your own podcast that you do. Um, so, I mean, it's always a pleasure sitting down with you guys and, and talking branding. And there's, I'm definitely going to have to have you back because this is opening the door for so many more questions that I have on my end as far as the branding side versus marketing side. Uh, but thank you so much for joining me on the podcast today. I really appreciate you guys taking the time out of your day to, to have this conversation about what comes first, branding or marketing. Thank you, Katie. You're one of our faves, by the way. Absolutely. We love you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. And uh, if you don't mind me telling your listeners, listen, uh, Katie knows what she's talking about. If you love this show like we love this show, please go give her a review. Please subscribe and follow her. It makes a huge difference. And she's going to keep bringing you this kind of content. We know her well. Listen to Michael, everyone. Yeah, just just do what Michael says. <laughs> I just All right. Well, thanks again, says, guys, for joining so me. You know, we are <laughs> smart man, smart man. <laughs> thanks so much for listening to this week's episode of Rocky Mountain Marketing. Make sure to subscribe so that you can continue navigating the world of entrepreneurship. And I'd love to hear from you. Please leave the show a review and connect with me on social media. You can find me on Instagram at I am Katie Brinkley or connect with me on LinkedIn. And if you're ready to start making some sales on social media, be sure to grab my free guide to selling in the DMs without being spammy. You can get that at katiebrinkley.com. Let's keep taking your marketing to all new heights.